Thank you for staying with us on the program. Tonight, I have joining me from our Abuja studio, Nigeria's Minister for Information, Mr. Laber and Marco. Thank you for joining us on the program tonight. Let me start by asking you, 15 years of Nigeria's democracy. Well, President Jonathan is, an, uh, is a very fortunate man in the sense that 50 years of Nigeria is in that office. Again, 100 years of Nigeria's amalgamation is there, and 15 years of Nigeria's democracy is the man that is on that exalted throne of Nigeria's presidency. But at this critical time in our history, what would you say how far we have come in our democratic journey? Uh, Sean, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity again to invite me to participate in the channel's program, uh, Politics Today. Um, and I also want to seize this opportunity to thank all our viewers for keeping faith with us uh, each time we're here. Um, having said this, 15 years of democracy, continuous unbroken uh, democratic rule in Nigeria. Uh, first of all, that's a landmark. It's a milestone. Uh, so you remember that uh, never have we had this this long in any democratic dispensation. Um, the first ever time we became a democratic republic, it lasted barely six years, mm -hmm. uh, 1960 to 1966. Um, the military came on the 1st of January, and everything was aborted. Uh, then in the Second Republic, we lasted about four years, three months, um, October 1979 to December uh, 1983. Uh, the Babangida transition was still born. Uh, governors were elected, but the election of Abiola uh, never came to be because he was not sworn in as the executive president of Nigeria. So the republic collapsed uh, into another coup. Uh, this is the first time we are running Nigeria on a democratic pedestal for 15 years. So for us as a people, uh, we must thank God for this opportunity to see democratic governors run in our country for 15 years. Um, and, and, and you could see that in the last 15 years, in spite of um, the challenges we still face developing a new democracy, you will see that Nigerians are now getting used to the idea that power is temporary, that people will come to power, stay for a definite period of time, and leave. Now, this enables our citizens to look forward to change, predictable change, no change that will come uh, because there is a coup, no change that will, be, will come because some people uh, are stronger than others and use the gun, you know, to change people elected. But this time around, we are seeing that um, a number of people were elected in uh, 1999, but 2003, some were voted out. Between 2003 and 2007, the first set of governors left. And between 2007 and now, several people who were elected have left power. We have also getting used to seeing people who are executive governors, executive president, joining the queue, you know, with every other Nigerian. This has humbled power, and this is very important for us. But more importantly, the last 15 years have witnessed continued progress. And I can say that it is not an accident that in the last 15 years, you have seen that the Nigerian economy has expanded, has expanded in spite of the challenges we still face, We've been able to manage the economy such that we have exited the debt trap. You remember that by 1999, we had a debt overhang of almost $40 billion. And we're using almost more than uh, close to a half of the annual budget to service external debts. In the last 15 years, we have exited the debt trap. And today, Nigeria is no longer under the weight of the debt burden. And as a result, we've been able to plan our economy, and as a result of which we have now become the number one economy in Africa. And in the last four years of President Jonathan's administration, you have seen the economy growing steadily at almost 7% per annum. Our economic growth has overtaken population growth. The economy has expanded. Our social services are coming back. If you look at the railways, they are coming back. If you look at the roads, there have been comprehensive uh, reconstruction of several roads. The roads are much better than they were uh, in the past. And as we go into 2015, we're beginning to see that Nigerian travelers all over the country are seeing the changes that have come on board. We have also had uh, our banks getting stronger. We were able to overcome the financial crisis in the West. Uh, we didn't, uh, our banks survived it. 
the capital market has again revived. And today, the capital market is expanding with a lot of investment from abroad. We have taken the front seat as the number one destination for investment in Africa. This is in spite of the insecurity we face in the northern part of the country. We are beginning to see the power sector take a new look. The telecom is a, is, is a, a gift of this democracy to Nigeria. 2001, 450 analog telephone lines. 2014, 120 million mobile lines. Now, so on if, the, if, if I'm a the population in, of Nigerians... Of, uh, I mean, if one uh, decides to reel out how far uh, the obstacles and the journey so far, it's going to be an all-day uh, affair. But, but let's look at it now, politically. Um, we've seen that uh, the, the, the ruling party from 1999 today has grown, and also uh, we've seen some level of development in the opposition. Things have changed from the last time we saw some form of democracy in 92, 93. But this time around, how would you describe the maturity of the opposition? Because we understand sometimes uh, your ruling party has co uh, come out to blame the, uh, the opposition party at some point. How would you describe the maturity of the now opposition party in this dispensation? Well, well um, you, you recollect that APC has just come on board uh, thanks to the, um, the electoral reforms of President Jonathan. Uh, the president came to power uh, under the promise that elections must be better. And he reorganized INEC uh, such that he appointed <coughs> Professor Jega a former university don, former, uh, uh, a former um, ASU leader as the uh, national uh, chairman of INEC. And since 2011, we have, be, we have begun to see a change in the electoral fortunes of opposition parties because the president is not interested in rigging elections. And because of that, the reforms he has brought on board have given more confidence to our democracy. And you will notice that in the last four years, Wherever the opposition wins election, the president is the first to pick the telephone to congratulate them. The president has also respected all court judgments relating to elections. If PDP lost, he will still respect the, the, the due process and acknowledge the victory. Now, the reforms has brought on board have encouraged the opposition. Today, we have registered APC as a major political party in the opposition. And this is a plus, you know, to the kind of leadership President Jonathan has provided for Nigeria, a true democrat trying to develop democratic institutions. The National Assembly, the opposition, has grown better under President Jonathan because he had the temper for democracy. He wants Nigeria to grow. Now, as for the majority of APC, um, well, we have already congratulated them for emerging as an opposition party because it's going to make the politics more competitive. That's what the president said, that with a major opposition party, what it means is that it's going to open up the democratic space for Nigerians to make choices is going to make power more competitive, is going to also compel PDP uh, to work harder, uh, and also to work harder, and indeed, um, it will make PDP better, because with the opposition party coming on board, uh, internal democracy in PDP will also improve. But as to the maturity of APC, uh, well, it's too early to say anything. They have just come on board. They are just about to conduct their first national uh, convention, uh, we have seen how they have conducted their world congresses so far, uh, local government congresses, state congresses up to now. Uh, well, a, a, a new party will always have teething problems. But we have also noticed that um, there is the incidence of violence. There was a lot of gun, uh, firefights and gunfights in several states in the course of the congresses conducted in several states, uh, which should not be. We have also we saw a lot of uh, confusion and disputes uh, when the World Congresses were conducted, when the local government Congresses were con uh, conducted. In the case of some state Congresses, there are still major divisions in several states, uh, like Adamawa, like Ogun, uh, like uh, Edo had a major problem. We are seeing a lot of people live in droves, you know, in mass from the party back to PDP. Uh, we are hoping that the opposition party will hold itself and reorganize itself, respect internal democracy of its members, and there are also some other things we are noticing. Some of the parties that collapse into APC are beginning to feel worried that uh, the party is being taken over by new entrants, particularly those governors that left PDP to APC have taken over a major chunk of the party, and they have displaced a number of people who made the sacrifices to form the party. 
a number of them, like Bafarawa, former governor of uh, Sokoto, Shekaro, former governor of Kano, have returned back to PDP because the party did not offer them justice. Um, so the problem we are going to have with APC is the idea that um, anybody that left PDP back to APC becomes a progressive overnight. And so the original vision of the party, as was understood by the ACN, by the um, CPC, AMPP, has been diluted. So the urge to recruit new members has affected the quality of the party, its ideology, and Nigerians are beginning to see it as uh, not pro providing us the moral anchor, the moral you know, high ground which we thought an opposition party would provide. But like we say, it's a new party. But we're seeing a lot of internal divisions and conflict in the party. Okay. All right. Because uh, in, in, in that sense, uh, some people will say, Honorable Minister, if I'm a major coming problem here, there. 